Hello, John here with the Columbia River Orienteering Club in Portland, Oregon. When learning to use a compass, the thing that typically causes the most confusion for people is declination. That's really too bad because declination is a simple concept and it's easy to deal with. Here's what we're going to cover today. What is declination? How much and why it changes? How to find the correct value for your area? Some examples of when you do and do not need to care about it? And finally, what's the best way to deal with it? Let's get started. To get a handle on declination, we need to understand that there are actually two different kinds of north that are important in navigation. These are true north and magnetic north. First, let's look at true north. True north is also known as geographic north or the north pole. This is the axis around which the earth spins. When you see a north arrow on a map, it almost always points to true north. Now magnetic north. To understand that involves a little geology. The interior of the Earth is made up of a giant swirling mass of molten rock. Some of this rock has iron in it, and this lava sloshing around creates electricity, which in turn creates the Earth's magnetic field. The compass, or the needle on your compass, is a well balanced, lightweight, magnetized metal strip. The compass needle aligns itself with the Earth's magnetic field, with the red end of the needle always pointing to magnetic north. However, for most places on Earth, your compass needle points to a different location than the true North Pole. Presently, magnetic north is in the Arctic Ocean in northern Canada, about 12,000 or 1,200 miles, rather, away from the North Pole. I say presently because magnetic north moves based on fluctuations of the Earth's magnetic field. So we have a north arrow on a map which points to the North Pole, and magnetic north, which is where your compass needle points. Because these are different, this gives us the definition of declination. It's the angle between true north and magnetic north based on your location. Let's look at a simplified map and see how this works. In reality, I should say it's a little more complicated than this because your compass needle follows curved magnetic flux lines and not a straight line, but this is the general idea. This red line is a straight line from my location, Portland, Oregon, to the North Pole or true north. The magenta line is a straight line from Portland to magnetic north. This is the direction my compass needle points. Notice the magenta line is heading off to the right or the east of the red line. If we measure this angle with a protractor, we'd get a number of about 16 degrees. That's the current declination for Portland, 16 degrees east. Let's compare this with the east coast of the United States. When we use a compass in, say, Vermont, the red end of the needle would point along the magenta line to magnetic north. You can see that the magenta line is now off to the left or the west of true north. This angle also happens to be about 16 degrees, the same as Oregon, but in Vermont it's west declination rather than east. And finally, if we move to the center of the United States, we see that the lines are pretty much on top of each other. This happens to be a line of zero declination. On this line, your compass needle points to both true north and magnetic north. Looking at this declination chart of the United States, the values are just about what we found from Google Earth. The blue lines show areas of east declination, and the red lines show areas of west declination. You can see that this varies from about 17 degrees east in the Pacific Northwest to about 17 degrees west in Maine. The black line in the middle shows a line of zero declination. Just as declination changes within the U.S., it also varies greatly around the world. You can see the lines follow some pretty crazy patterns, especially when you get close to the South Magnetic Pole. This is one of the extra challenges of polar exploration that your compass basically doesn't work. Now notice the green line winding through the middle. This shows a line of zero declination. And again, if you were on this line, your compass needle would point to both true north and magnetic north. Topographic maps typically have the declination value printed on them somewhere. This is usually a diagram. On a standard U.S. Geological Survey map, it usually looks like this. Most users can forget about the mills and the GN, which stands for Grid North. All we want is the value for MN, or Magnetic North, shown here as 16.5 degrees east. However, if your map is older, the declination is probably a bit out of date. Why? Because declination changes over time. 
Here we see that declination has changed dramatically over the last 100 years in the Pacific Northwest. If you were using a topo map printed in, say, 1960, the declination value in the margin would be 21 degrees. But we know that today it's actually closer to 16. That 5 degree difference could be enough to cause a navigation error. The reason why declination changes over time is that the location of magnetic north moves. And to make it even more interesting, it doesn't move in a straight line. Here's a map of the approximate location of magnetic north over the last few centuries. You can see it's moved around a lot. So the margin of a map, especially if it's older, is not the best source for the correct declination. It's easy to find the right declination. Go to magneticdeclination.com. And one click on the Google map shows you the current declination for any location on Earth. Also, if you print a map with good map software, such as caltopo.com, you'll always get a map with the correct declination. Well, now that you know what declination is, some of you might be wondering, do I really need to care about this? The answer is, sometimes. If you just need a general direction, then you can probably ignore declination. For example, say you parked your car on this north-south running road and hiked away from it for an hour or so with your route drawn here by the purple line. To get back to your car, a look at the map shows that if you simply walk in the general direction of west, or 270 degrees, you'll have to hit the road. In this case, declination doesn't really matter. You might be 10 degrees, 20 degrees, or more off of walking a true west bearing, but you're still going to hit the road eventually. A navigation term for the road is a catching feature, or sometimes called a backstop, and these can be very nice to have. However, if you're trying to find a smaller object over a larger distance, then accounting for declination can become more important. Here's an example to illustrate this. Julie and Joe set up camp at this small lake at the end of a trail. They see a hot spring, marked on the map in orange, and they want to find it. They wander off in the general direction of the hot spring, and eventually they get there. Now they want to return to camp. They see from their map that camp is due north of the spring and exactly one mile away. Julie has a compass that is correctly adjusted for the local declination 17 degrees east. She sets her compass dial to zero and rotates the base plate of her compass until red is in the shed. Then she follows her bearing of zero degrees. After about 30 minutes, Julie gets right to camp because she was walking on a true north bearing of zero degrees, just what her map told her. Joe, however, has a compass that is not adjusted for declination. Just like Julie, Joe sets his compass dial to zero and rotates the base plate until red's in the shed. Then he starts following his bearing of what he thinks is zero degrees. But after 30 minutes, Joe is actually a quarter mile away from camp and lost. What happened to Joe? In fact, Joe is not walking on a bearing of zero degrees. He was walking on a bearing of 17 degrees. With a declination of 17 degrees, traveling for one mile will give a positional error of about a quarter mile. So depending on what you're trying to find, that amount of error can be a significant problem. So we've covered what declination is and looked at two different scenarios showing when it's not important and when it is. How do we deal with declination? Well, first off, forget the backcountry math. The confusion over declination usually comes from people struggling with an old school technique of adding or subtracting to your declination to match the magnetic bearing to the map. This method is taught in a lot of navigation books and in many YouTube videos. The math for this may seem simple when you first learn it, but trust me, remembering it years from now when you're stressed out and lost is gonna be really hard. Let's face it, most of us don't use a compass very often, so we don't get a lot of practice. Happily, there is one easy solution. Simply spend a few extra bucks and buy a good quality compass with adjustable declination. Your compass needle still points to magnetic north. That's never going to change. But after declination is adjusted, which takes just a few seconds, you now measure your bearings to true north, which makes them map your ma match your map and eliminates all the confusing arithmetic. Two good compasses that both have adjustable declination are the Sunto M3, my favorite, and a newcomer, the Brunton True Arc 5. These are both available at REI. 
Some of you may already have a compass, but you're not sure if it has adjustable declination. Here's one way to hopefully tell. Turn your compass over and look for a small screw on the back side. If you have one, this is where you adjust the declination with a tiny screwdriver or a knife tip. If you don't see a screw, your compass probably does not have adjustable declination. Also, some of you may have a compass with adjustable declination, but you're not sure if it's set correctly. Here's how to tell. Turn your compass dial so north is at the reed bearing here mark, shown here by the red arrow. If the red orienting arrow points exactly to north or zero degrees, then your compass is not adjusted for declination. That's what we see in this photo. However, if the red orienting arrow points off to the left or the right of n or zero degrees, then your compass is adjusted for declination. Whether it's correct or not, you'll have to check. An east declination would have the red orienting arrow pointing off to the right or the one o'clock position, as we see here. A west declination would have the red arrow pointing off to the left or more towards the 11 o'clock position. If you want more details on how to do this, we have a video on the complete process, video number nine, adjusting declination on your compass. Finally, for you frugal navigators who have a base plate compass without adjustable declination and don't want to buy a new one, here's a little workaround. Find your local declination and draw it directly on the dial of your compass with the Sharpie pen. Now, when using your compass, you line up the red needle on the pen mark and not the orienting arrow. Just use a dab of nail polish remover or other type of solvent to remove the pen mark if you need to change it. Well, we've covered a lot of ground here. Let's sum up what we've learned. One, declination is the angle between true north and magnetic north. Two, it changes based on your location and a little bit over time. You can usually ignore it if you simply need to walk in a general direction, but declination can be a lot more important if you're trying to find a small objective over a large distance. And finally, the best solution is to just buy a compass with adjustable declination, set it correctly for your local area, and measure all map bearings to true north. Thanks very much for watching, and if you found this video helpful, please give us a favorable comment and a high five on YouTube. Thanks.